1990, Dr. Emmanuel Cauchy abandoned his attempt to reach the summit of Everest in order to save his life. Since then, he has investigated the domain of high altitude, taking a medical approach. During his investigations, he came across Nicholas Jaeger, a pioneer of hypoxia in low oxygen environments. I discovered Nicholas Jaeger when I was very young. I read his book when I was 14. And I realized just how much this person fascinated me. He shared my interest in physical activities, a sort of balance between physical exertion and intellectual curiosity. And I just really enjoy practicing alpine medicine for that reason. I also enjoy the eccentric, well, kind of crazy and adventurous side of it, and the chance to do something that's never been done before. Nicholas Jaeger, like Emmanuel Cauchy, was a doctor. Fascinated by hypoxia, he put himself to the test in order to solve its enigmas. In 1979, he climbed to the top of the Andes in Peru. He lived at 6,700 meters longer than anybody in history, undergoing medical exercises each day despite the cold and discomfort. The idea for this experiment occurred to him the year before at the top of Mount Everest. It was an unusually beautiful day on Everest. Burdened by the weight of their oxygen bottles, three Frenchmen made it to the top of the world, 25 years after Tenzing and Hillary's historic feat. Once at the top, Nicholas Jaeger and his companions took off their masks. 8,848 meters high. The top of Mount Everest is the closest a man can get to the stratosphere. The air is three times thinner than at sea level. In other words, the body functions on three times less oxygen than normal. Until the spring of 1978, nobody in the world had ever breathed air like that without an oxygen bottle. Experts had said it was impossible. For one and a half hours, Nicholas Jaeger took photos and chatted with his companions, observing them with a doctor's eye. It was interesting from a medical point of view. I am surprised that one feels as well as one does at that altitude. We are all without masks. The second you move, you are completely breathless. But none of us has a headache. We are very comfortable. We are lucky to have such exceptional weather. It's not cold. The sun is warm. There is a slight wind from the north, but we are two meters below the ridge and we hardly feel it. While his companions were getting ready to descend, Jaeger, all alone, lit a filterless gitan, the highest cigarette in the world. It's no big deal for him, but it's an important indicator. If he is able to inhale smoke in such an oxygen-poor atmosphere, it's because he has a unique ability to withstand hypoxia. That day, his horizons changed. He decided he would return to Everest. Not like the French expedition, so contrary to his style. No, this time he would go it alone, without oxygen bottles and by the most arduous path, the gigantic south wall of Lhotse. 
To face such a challenge, Jaeger had to prepare his body for the lack of oxygen and become a kind of explorer of hypoxia. He would spend the last 18 months of his life working on the project. Nicholas Jaeger had been climbing ever since he could walk, and he lived out his passion with a kind of dauntless gravity. He first made his name as an alpinist when he was still a medical student. He is self-confident, quick, and solitary. When he obtained his diploma as a guide in 1975, he graduated at the top of his class at the National School of Ski and Alpinism. At 32, this doctor who had just embarked upon his career was simply one of the best alpinists of his generation. He discovered high-altitude alpinism in Peru, 5,000 meters, 6,000 meters. He immediately felt at ease at low oxygen levels. Nicolas Jaeger returned to the Cordillera Blanca in the beginning of the summer of 1979. But this time, the sprinter had to learn to slow down. He wanted to take the time to explore his body to know just how far he could go in resisting hypoxia. His goal was to live for several months on the highest summit in Peru, Huascaran, which overlooks the town of Juarez. Operation Survive Alone on Huascaran, alone at 6,700 meters on the highest summit in the Andes of Peru. Alone for several months, Nicholas Jaeger set up camp in the land of low oxygen where the air has only 43% of normal oxygen levels. At once, both doctor and guinea pig, he was deliberately exposing himself to conditions that disrupt the body. In the midst of the Cordillera Blanca, his tiny blue vessel looked as if it was floating on a sea of petrified waves. A dauntless traveler, Nicholas Jaeger was setting out for the physiological unknown. How would his body react? For the doctor, as for the alpinist, the answer was rife with unknowns and surprises. More than anything else, the mountain is something sensitive. It has a keen understanding of itself. I understood along with it that when you undergo something, an acclimatization, you feel stronger and you're able to anticipate medical problems. <laughs> How do you acclimatize? For most mortals, you have to push open the door on the world of low oxygen. Take the first right when you arrive at Chamonix. Take the cable car to the Aiguille du Midi, nearly 3,000 meters all in one go. And just like that, in half an hour, you find yourself plunged into air that has a third less oxygen than normal. <laughs> <laughs> Francine and Virginie are nurses who work at the Chamonix Hospital with Dr. Cushy. Every day they're dealing with mountain sickness in their work and have agreed to climb to high altitudes and describe the experience. I'm totally out of breath. I didn't think that at 3,800 meters I'd be so out of breath. I'm having trouble getting air. My legs are weak. Do you feel your legs getting wobbly? Don't worry, we'll take it slowly. You need to start thinking about your breathing. It's very important. If you feel out of breath, I'll adapt to your rhythm. That's why I'm here. Try a short, regular rhythm, especially if you feel like you're getting a headache. 
Well, you see, we left at 1,000 meters and climbed very quickly to 3,800. And you're not at all acclimated, so it's absolutely normal. Once you enter an oxygen-poor atmosphere, the body sets into motion a sort of emergency plan. Breathing accelerates and the heart beats faster. But this protective reflex is not efficient and is costly in terms of energy. The body wastes its resources like an engine that is being revved up. In order to understand the mechanism, you have to look deep inside the body. Oxygen, the body's fuel, descends to the bottom of the bronchioles. It crosses the membranes of the alveoli and enters the blood. Red blood cells transport it to the heart, where the blood is pumped through the aorta and the arteries to the organs and muscles. When oxygen is lacking, the mechanism stalls. High altitudes produce a shock to the body. The first night is often accompanied by unpleasant symptoms. Migraine, nausea, loss of appetite, insomnia and vomiting. Francine knows that the acclimatization process starts the second she gets out of the cable car and that the effects will be unpleasant. Francine isn't feeling well. What time is it? Two o'clock. Well, we can try and put you in a pressurization bag for a while. And that should help. I can't breathe out. I vomited everything up and I have nothing left. You have to go slow when you pump, or else you'll get sick. Are you okay, Francine? Originally, this was done to treat pulmonary edema. We used it only in emergency situations. Little by little, we realized we could also use it to treat acute mountain sickness when people were having difficulty acclimatizing. Well, we can do one or two sessions, while on expedition or while trekking. It works well. We do short treatments with it before major problems occur. We begin by increasing the pressure. In other words, it's like descending going down very quickly. Here we have a conversion table. We're at about 3,500 meters here, and when the bag is inflated, we'll be at the equivalent of 1,200. You've descended Chamonix by cable car. Afterwards, five pumps every minute to replenish the oxygen, or else you'll go blue. And tomorrow you won't be having lunch with us. <laughs> 
to adapt to hypoxia, Francine's body has begun a painful transformation. One hour in the bag will make these symptoms disappear by simulating a super speedy descent. But this magical effect is only temporary. The mechanism has been activated and the body is beginning to produce more red blood cells. This upheaval is quite painful. Inside the alveoli, the blood soon will be able to absorb a lot more oxygen. After two weeks, the body will find a new equilibrium. Our vital organs will breathe better.